What? Watch this show again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that gets my goat. I apologize in advance. Oh. Um, another character that had a ton to do in this movie that hasn't had so much to do in other movies was Nebula. She really stepped up in like how important she was and I really liked her in this movie. Again, that, that character has grown and you're reminded how much she's grown because we get to see her as she originally was, where she's like the bratty younger sister that's not as good as her older sister. That, oh, that was so cool. And they gave her so much of an arc and, and yet she's still sort of a dark, really flawed, or maybe not flawed, damaged. That's the word I'm looking for. Damaged character. And yeah, I, just, I, I can't wait to see more stuff with her. Well, and it was just so interesting because of who she is and what she is. Like, that's what kind of ruined the plan. That there was this other nebula back in time whose computer brain or memories or whatever could be tapped into that they could see. And that's how they were able to make everything tough and difficult. <laughs> but, you know, I never would have thought of that. You know, you think, I mean, the whole time travel thing is always hard to wrap your head around. And I liked how they talked about it with referring to all the old movies <laughs> and the fact that, no, you know, it doesn't mean that this is happening again. It means that this is happening for the first time for you in this time. But in her case, with having this computerized part and machine parts to her, Thanos was able to access her thoughts and memories and kind of find out what, what they were trying to do and what the plan was. It was interesting because, you know, Thanos was killed off in the first few minutes of the movie. Right. And I suppose we could have gone the whole time trying to undo what he did without having a person that's the bad guy. But I, I liked it when they brought him back in and uh, we had our bad guy there again as they fixed everything. Everything went to hell right immediately thereafter. He's such a unique villain. And he was, we were talking about, who was the main character of Endgame? The main character of Infinity War was Thanos. You don't see that very often. You'll always hear, you know, that everybody is the hero of their own story. But Thanos is a great example of that, of where he is, in a way, super self-righteous. And he believes that what he's doing will make things better and fix things. And, and, and yeah, he becomes a little bit more villainous at the end. But before that, there's that moment when he gets out of his ship and he takes off his helmet, and he just sits. He waits. That's such an unusual villain thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There, there was something so complex about this character that he was fascinating. Well, because he feels like he's helping everything. Like, he's what he's... he. It's not like, oh, I'm trying to get power for myself. It's, no, this is better for the universe. What I am doing is going to make the universe thrive. So he's sort of coming in his kind of twisted perspective from a place of good. Like he's doing this great thing for everyone. What other people are too weak to do. It's great. I mean, it, it just adds so much to everything. And I like how he comes back. I like how he doesn't try to do the same thing. Like he realizes what's happened, that what he did didn't really work because you still have all these people sort of trying to undo it. So instead, just get rid of everyone and then start over and then they won't know any yeah, different. Yeah, so. I think that's when his uh, logic breaks down. The universe is finite was always his thing and, and I, it doesn't have enough to support the endless amount of life that this time I'm going to get rid of all the life and just bring back half of it and they, and they don't know. You're creating a whole new universe. Just make it bigger. <laughs> you know, make it have more stuff. Yeah. 
<laughs> why you know once once you get to there you, yeah your thing breaks down and now you're just punishing people but you know it was good to have it and it you get that gigantic battle at the end where everything's just blown to bits and this is where the biggest reaction happened in my theater is when the revived heroes return you have that fight scene, which seemed a little off to me, to tell you the truth, because Thanos doesn't have his power stones anymore, or his his various stones, and yet he takes on Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America all at once. Well, that was the question that I had for you guys, because I didn't remember well enough Thanos before he gets the stones and before he has the gauntlet. Like, how powerful was he? Because, yes, he seemed incredibly powerful, like, without all of that stuff. We had never seen him do anything before he gets that first without stone. stones, yeah. When he fights Hulk at the beginning of Infinity War, he's already got a stone. I don't know, but boy, he ta- he handles Hulk so so easily at the beginning of that movie and i feel like yeah this mo- if if anything he was more powerful in this movie but but not in a my complaints about captain marvel sort of way in a oh geez you know now what can we try that didn't work now what can we try oh that didn't work now you know that kind of thing yeah and the biggest reaction in my cinema was the force awakens moment with the lightsaber that happened again in this movie, but with Thor's hammer. And, it, <laughs> and when Cap held the, 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 the hammer and wielded the power of Thor, there were all these people around me that cheered. And just like you were saying at a, a stand-up comedian's show, that was infectious, and I started to cheer too. Uh-huh. So, and you, you had a little bit of foreshadowing if you go back to the Age of Ultron where they're all joking around and they're they're trying to lift the hammer. And yeah... Captain America is almost able. He, he gets it to move, and you see that look on Thor's face when it twitches, and he goes, "Whoa, oh crap!" <laughs> but earlier in this movie, I thought that was so touching when he's back, you know, in time with his mom, and he holds his hand out. Is it going to come? Yeah, and it does, and he says, "I am still worthy," you know. So yeah, that was cool, and then he has both. <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting that he was fighting with both, I thought. And yeah, and they kind of tag teamed it for a while. But yeah, when Captain America is, they've basically been defeated and he gets back up and you expect him to say, you know, I can do this all day or something. (laughs) (laughs) He gets back up and then he hears the noise in his ear and he says, on your left, Cap, this is Sam. We're coming in with some reinforcements. And then all the portals start opening up and my daughter went, oh, it's Doctor Strange. I forgot about <laughs> Doctor Strange. And then the first people through is not Doctor Strange. <laughs> Instead, it's Black Panther, which was OK. And everybody starts cheering. And when Spider-Man swings in. That was the loudest that my audience in my theater got. They were so excited to see Spider-Man again. I feel kind of a little bit bad for you, Renee, because you haven't seen Spider-Man. You got a little bit of the dynamic. I saw Civil War and I also saw Infinity War and he's like pretty. Yeah, so you've got a pretty good amount of the dynamic. But yeah, just the father-son relationship between Spider-Man and Iron Man and you know, the thing that basically convinced him to try it is is that he lost the kid. Right. Uh, and so despite he may lose his wife and his own child, he still feels compelled to do it for Spider-Man. And I just, from a storytelling perspective, I liked how it was conveyed what the people who had been dusted experienced. You know, Spider-Man says... You know, I came back and Doctor Strange was like, oh, here, it's been five years. Like, go through this portal. (laughs) And I liked that because I was curious about that. Well, what's the perception going to be for these people that have disappeared and they're all of a sudden back? Yeah, I gave you a a quick update of here's what happened. This is how they all showed up. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is what they're doing there. And yeah, it makes sense that they all showed up because Doctor Strange knows. He's seen it. 
he knows the five million futures. Have you guys seen Doctor Strange? Yes. Have we seen? Come on, Renee. Yeah, see, that's one that I haven't seen either. Sorry. <laughs> but my daughter did tell me, like, well, he, after... He does so little in this movie that I think you could be forgiven. Although all the stuff with the Ancient One is so much more rewarding if you've seen Doctor Strange. Right, and that's what my daughter said after she saw it in the morning. She said... Now, there is a character from Doctor Strange who is pretty important in this. Like, do you want to know about that? I'm like, okay. And so she told me about that. And, you know, it was helpful. That was another Um, one of those characters I never expected to see again. And it was really cool. I mean, they gave her a lot, a long explanation. And I have to admit, I've seen the movie twice and I still don't get the time travel or the thing that they're talking about. But that's okay. I'm a dumb guy. Well, the thing I was going to say is that you missed... Not seeing Spider-Man Homecoming is, at the very beginning of Spider-Man Homecoming, Peter is sitting in the car with Tony, and Tony leans over to open the door, and Peter thinks that Tony is trying to give him a hug. And so he hugs him, and he's like, no, 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 kid, I'm just opening the door. And then, yeah, when he sees him, he hugs the boy. And I felt like that was a payoff, an intentional callback to that hug in Homecoming. Well, I think there's a lot of stuff like that, but I don't think it mattered if you didn't see it. So, like, one that no, I noticed No, but it's was... just every single one of these little things is just another smile or another oh, wink right. or another, hey, guys, thanks for coming with us on all these movies. So the one that I noticed was Hope calling him Cap, you know, to Ant-Man. And that's one of my favorite lines from Ant-Man and the Wasp when, you know, he calls, he ref- he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, but Cap needed us. And he's like, Cap? And his whole, like, babbling, no, 10 America, well, that's what his friends call him and blah, 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 <laughs> you know. And so that was a callback. <laughs> Let's talk about Ant-Man for a minute there. He had a ton to do in this mm-hmm. movie, too. And I guess you needed the extra hour yeah. to give all these characters uh, their proper uh, runtime or their proper coverage or whatever. But wow, that character has really mm-hmm. grown too. And yeah. who would have guessed that that secondary or tertiary Marvel character would be our way of fixing everything? <laughs> well, and that a rat happened to walk across the buttons in the right way to bring him out, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> That rat had actually walked across the buttons a thousand times before that. It wasn't until five years that he actually hit the buttons in the right order. So, you know. Since we're talking about characters, uh, here's one that we skipped that I feel was the one that was worst done by. But but you mean like even less than Nick Fury or... Thunderbolt Ross or one of these characters that didn't even get a line? <laughs> no, no, not that he didn't didn't have a big enough part, but that what they did with him just didn't work. And also they didn't resolve an issue that was left lingering from Infinity War. My guess is you're going to say Hulk. And yes, I'm going to talk about the Hulk because the Hulk... In Infinity War, there was this thing going on where the Hulk was afraid to come out. I'm assuming he was afraid. The Hulk wouldn't come out. And in the final battle, Bruce Banner has to get in a Hulkbuster armor to fight. And the funny thing is there's a toy out there. Uh, I want to say it was only available at Target. It was a great big Hulkbuster armor that came with a Hulk that could go inside of the Hulkbuster armor and could burst out of the Hulkbuster armor. Why was there a toy made like this? All I can guess is that that was something that was supposed to have happened in Infinity War, and then they decided to cut it. And so instead, that never gets resolved in Infinity War. And so you're like, okay, well, in the next movie, we're going to find out what the hell's going on. But no! Instead, the first time we see the Hulk, he is the Hulk, always the Hulk. And he's just like, yeah, now I'm just the Hulk and I'm smart, but I'm also the Hulk. And we have, I mean, yeah, it's five years later, so stuff happened, but we see none of it. And it's such a huge difference. The Hulk has just become Bruce Banner. And I felt like it, it didn't work at all. They just, they left it. They just jumped ahead. 
They just thought, okay, we want to do Professor Hulk, so we're just going to go straight to it, and we're just going to have him do a couple lines saying, yeah, I just figured this is okay to do that now. We'll just use that. And I don't know why they did it. It didn't seem necessary. You don't know why they did it in between movies. Is that what you're right. saying? Or, or, like it was a significant enough moment, the agreement between Hulk and Banner to coexist, that we should have seen that in the movie? Or you just don't like that at all? Definitely. It was a, a big thing that should not have just been done off screen. Because it's been a thing that's been coming along for all of these various movies, you know? He was just a straight-up monster that everyone was afraid of in the first Avengers movie. And then he's they had the whole thing with, the, oh, it's, it's getting pretty late, big guy. The sun is going down and all that <laughs> stuff. They were learning to c- control it a little bit. And then they had the stuff in Thor Ragnarok where it seems like Hulk is gaining a personality or or a consciousness or whatever of his own he's not just going crazy machine you know when he becomes the hulk and then boom he just we just jumped and we didn't get to see any of it Uh, i don't think it was necessary like bruce banner could have just been bruce banner and done all the things that he did and we could have resolved the thing It, it was just forgotten they just didn't resolve it at all it's a we got too much going on in this movie. We're not going to bother with that. So let's go. Well, they definitely had too much going on in the movie. Yeah. But yeah, until you brought it up, I hadn't really thought about it. The thing that I thought you were going to say was that, you know, he had a thing with Black Widow that was never resolved. And then she's dead. Yeah. And I thought that that's where you were going with it. So that's interesting. That And that was... It, 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 I guess it wasn't resolved. I mean, they, they didn't really do much with it until she dies. And then he is one of the people who is most broken up by it. Him and Hawkeye together are the two that seem to be the most upset when she's gone. Well, with the relationship, I felt that she, that was resolved when she pushes him over the side. You know, she says she's talking to Bruce and says, I adore you, and then pushes him off the edge and says, but I need the green guy. And so to me, that was like the end of their relationship right there Mm -hmm. because of what she did, which was, you could, from Bruce's perspective, maybe see as betrayal. But watching Ragnarok and then Infinity War and then this, to me, it made sense just because in Ragnarok, the Hulk is the main character. Like, he doesn't want Bruce. He wants to just be the Hulk. And then in Infinity War, he gets beaten badly by Thanos and thrown down to Earth and totally dominated. And he's like, okay, then I'm not coming out. (laughs) You know, like, he's not used to being physically beaten that way. So, I don't know. It didn't strike me as weird. I guess because of the five years later, because of what they had all been through, like, all the characters seem to have changed significantly. And so that's kind of what I saw as the Hulk as well. Like, he had changed. He's kind of one of the ones who had possibly changed for the better because he merged the best of the two sides of himself into this new Hulk. Anyway, that's how I took it. Interesting. I I, I guess I never gave that moment in Age of Ultron that much importance, but now I want to go back and watch that f- with that in mind and see if I see what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I just felt like that is an unresolved subplot that one day we're going to get closure on. Well, they totally could have done more with it for sure. But, you know, she and Bruce are having this rapport, but then she doesn't want Bruce. Like, she doesn't need Bruce. She needs Hulk. So she tries to get rid of Bruce and does. Right. Because that's what they need in that situation. They need him to fight. See, I felt that way in Infinity War when we see Wanda and Vision together. And Vision is now a human being mm-hmm. and they're in a relationship. I was just like, oh, well, I missed a movie. Guys, I wanted to see how all this happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. That would be an interesting movie. <laughs> and maybe that's what this television series I'd like to know more about that. And also the loss of her accent. Like, where the heck did her accent go? <laughs> yes, they, they ought to uh, cover that. 
because uh, she she says very very little in Endgame, but what she said I noticed was in an American accent. But if, apparently they're going to get that TV show, and maybe it will deal a little bit with how he chose to become human and how they fell in love. Because to me that's really interesting, a robot mm -hmm. developing feelings and all that stuff. But I just, I felt like I had missed a movie. Yeah, well, I mean, you did, but that's because they were tertiary characters, you know? They're, they're background characters, and so they don't make that movie. <laughs> there should have been one, and now they're going to. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's what the Scarlet Witch Vision miniseries, I don't know, what, what are they calling these things? Because they're not TV shows or series, really, they're... Yeah, a miniseries is probably a great way to refer to them, but nobody has ever used that term. Limited series, let's say that. That's what the comic books would be, is a limited <laughs> series that just focuses on Nightcrawler or just focuses on Doc Samson or, you know, something like that. Well, it's a total benefit to not watching all the movies because when something like that happens, you just think, oh, well, that must have been covered in a movie that I didn't see. And so you don't worry about it. <laughs> that must have happened in Doctor Strange. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So is there a lot more stuff you, you guys want to talk about? Do you guys have things? We kind of skipped over the middle. Like, well, what do you guys think about the time travel thing? Well, like I said, I don't get it. I guess the ending is what I'm talking about. It's just like, okay, I'm trying to reconcile the way the movie ends with how time travel seems to work in this movie, and I can't do it. But I, I don't yeah. have a problem with that. For me, it was just a super fun way to go revisit Guardians of the Galaxy and go revisit Thor and go revisit the Avengers and uh, it's play the hits in a sort of, of way and also see all these characters that we wouldn't otherwise ever see again. So for that part of it, I, I love the time travel. Plus we get to see closure with Tony's dad too, which I thought was really neat in the same way that Thor gets closure with his mom. And I like the way they did it, too, where it wasn't just like they went to one second before the snap and fixed it. Cut his arm off or whatever this time with the <laughs> axe. Or Mantis puts him to sleep. or you know. Right. Yeah. They, they didn't do a, a kind of silly like Bill and Ted's kind of a thing like, remember the garbage can? Remember the garbage can? And then the garbage can falls on the guy's head. I liked that they did it the way that they did it. And you knew that time travel was going to be a part of it somehow. It just seemed like it was kind of a given. I didn't. <laughs> like when they were talking, Thanos said that he had destroyed the stones into atoms. I thought that there was going to be some way to like go into the quantum realm and put them back together, you know, from their atoms. <laughs> yeah, so. or he shrunk them down so small that they were just in the quantum realm and you have to go down and find them there and bring them back out. Right. That thought passed my mind too. I would have bought that totally. Time travel has never bothered me. I know it bothers a lot of people as sort of a storytelling device, but that didn't bother me. But I did think... Like, for example, when they talked about the finite PIM particles um, so that they could only do it so many times. And then when things go wrong in New York, just like, OK, we'll just go to San Francisco and get more <laughs> PIM particles. You know, like that seemed like an easy solution, which is kind um, of what but I they did, did like how they ended up solving it. it it kind of is. I mean, it wasn't exactly that, but it was going back a little further. I expected them to have more trouble when Shirley from Community sees them. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, at first she's just a quickie side character that's not going to do anything. And then she's reporting them. And I'm like, oh, she's reporting them. They're going to have to do something crazy. And then, no, they mm -hmm. don't. He just ducks into the office and sees Peggy Carter in there and uh, I guess gets himself an idea. Hey. <laughs> This time travel thing may be useful. Oh, but sorry, let um, me interrupt. Wasn't that a wonderful moment? And they played the love theme from the original Captain America while he's looking at her. And the longing, that was so, so great. And he doesn't yeah. even talk to her. He just sees her. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Speaking of the love yeah. theme, from, they did a, a few of those pulling out the old theme song from an earlier movie and ah oh, you know how much i 
am a fan of that. So I have to say kudos to that. Like when Iron Man shows up and gives Captain America the shield that he's made for him, and you're just like, and you hear the song. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it too. And I, I thought of you, of course. I wish they'd done so much more of it, dang it. I actually saw that today. They had a trailer, or I think it was just a commercial, something like that, that was for this movie. Came out, I don't know, a few weeks ago. Anyways, it shows Iron Man, and they play the original Iron Man song, and then it shows Captain America, and they played the Captain America song, and it shows Thor, and they played all of their themes as they were going through the characters, and I was just like, oh, this is what I've always wanted. Yeah. I want to see that right oh. now. It's like, let's just stop recording so I can watch that, because I feel almost as strongly as you do about it, and when they played those songs that I recognized... I thought of how will Big be feeling right now. <laughs> I was bawling. Well, just good. Bawling. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to send you the link to that thing. Uh, it was pretty cool. I love time travel. Renee asked, you know, if I, I know there are people that have a problem with it. That they sort of think it's sort of a deuce at machina kind of a thing, you know, sort of a gimmick to resolve things. But, but everything's a gimmick. True love is a gimmick. Death is a gimmick. <laughs> if it's handled well. It's the greatest thing in the world, except for maybe a mutton, lettuce, mm-hmm. and tomato sandwich. I love time travel. <laughs> and there were a couple of things that they did in this that, that, you know, was a new spin on time travel. And I think that that's really, really cool. And it plus it gave us opportunities to expand on things that we already knew. It gives Loki a chance to maybe come back. And yeah, just character stuff. Well, and we got to see all of those characters again, you know, um, that we thought we'd lost. And at that point in the movie, we didn't know that they were coming back, you know, most of them. So to see Quill again and Iron Man's father, Tony's father and Thor's mother and just all of that, like it was just like, yay, <laughs> they're they're still there in another time, in another place. So. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, that was a lot of fun to, to be able to to do that and that's one of those things that i wondered you know after infinity war i remember seeing a meme where somebody just had a picture of a raccoon just sitting on the grass and it said guardians of the galaxy 3 yes yes that's one of my favorites now we've got the whole (laughs) group the weird thing was at the end thor gets into the ship with them and they're all there, except Gamora wasn't mm-hmm. there, was she? Right, because she doesn't know them. That's the thing. Right. And, and so I liked that part because, to me, it wouldn't make sense for her to just instantly bond with him. In fact, she says to her sister, like, this is the guy. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> you know? And mm-hmm. I think that could be part of Guardians of the Galaxy 3, you know? Yeah, I think that might be as Guardians of the Galaxy and, 1. you know, I found that really realistic. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I always enjoy the... Thor Quill interactions because you watch the actors being interviewed and you know they talk about the fact that Chris Hemsworth is 64 and Chris Pratt is 63 or something you know <laughs> like there's just a lot of kind of you know who's better and a lot know. of Chris measuring Yes, exactly. But, <laughs> so one one more thing for Guardians Three. In fact, uh, maybe we should just leave this for the end of the episode. Um, but I do really like that the roles of Gamora and Nebula seem to have reversed from where mm-hmm. they are at the beginning of Guardians Two, where Gamora is part of this team and a good guy and her sister is still ostensibly a bad guy and there's you know bitterness and all that stuff. I, I think it will be fun in Guardians 3 if we can see that their roles having changed and see Nebula trying to get Gamora to come over and join the team. Yeah. It, it creates story opportunities, and that's always cool. Whenever, you know, you paint yourself into a, a box, Big always uses the first Matrix as the best example, where it's just like the movie ends... And it's like, let's not go anywhere from here. The story is over. Right. But in this movie, even though it tied up a lot of threads, I felt like it created a couple of new threads. And there are still one or two threads that aren't tied up. Well, and there's ways for it to move on. I mean, obviously, there are 
parts of it that won't continue, but elderly Cap passing the shield on to Falcon, like that's, that's an example of how it could move on. And I don't know how you guys feel about that with Captain America being your favorite character, <laughs> but I thought it was really cool. <laughs> so Yeah, that was one of the things that I had, I have to say, a hard time with this movie is that, yeah, there are things that they kind of left saying, oh yeah, we can still do this or that. But otherwise, it felt like the end. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, we've had 22 movies or whatever. And I was saying last movie around, when we did our Infinity War show, that Infinity War was like the Empire Strikes Back yeah. of this generation. Because they did this thing that nobody would have dared you know nobody would believe and it was kind of a really similar to doing that in empire strikes back and this really feels like the return of the jedi of (laughs) this generation it feels over you know what i mean like they shut the door on so many things and i think it is over the comparison Actually, my daughter told me this. She said, you know, what I've heard, the comparison I've heard is that it's like the end of a season of television. I think that was intentional. I don't, I mean, the fact that they didn't have a a scene in the credits, you know, it's because it's over. Yeah, it was like the end of a play. All the uh, all the actors came out, took their bow. <laughs> That's what our but scene was. But even though it's was. over, you can see the potential for other stories. Sure. I mean, there's always potential for other stories. I mean, they did a Force Awakens. So, you know, Return of the Jedi wasn't really the end. They came up with something else. Um, They did a trilogy of prequels as well. But, you know, they, they brought an end to what we've known all this time. And, you know, we, we, uh, there's plenty of characters that are going to go on. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about it, though. Will, I love those stories of those characters as much i don't know like you said you know it was it was my favorite character was captain america although i'll have to admit i was much more moved by the end of iron man instead the sacrifice that he makes Mm -hmm. for everybody and now i'm going to tell you my story (laughs) as we were heading out to the movie i had put on my marvel comics t-shirt and uh, my son was, uh, I, I'd gotten him up because, you know, we we went to the 945 showing. So he'd barely gotten out of bed. And I was like, what shirt do you have? Because he had on a Flash shirt. Because mm-hmm. Flash is his favorite character for some reason. I, I really don't. I think it's because of the TV show. But he loves the Flash. And he has mm-hmm. tons of the Flash stuff. He doesn't have any Marvel stuff. And I was like, oh, d- do you have any shirt that you could wear? And he ran upstairs to look for a shirt that he could wear. Couldn't find the Spider-Man shirt that he used to have because he's outgrown it and it is gone. But, but he comes back down the stairs and he's wearing his Spider-Man costume that he owns. <laughs> now, now this... Spider-Man costume, this is an old costume. I want to say that he was three when he wore this for Halloween. Now, it's very stretchy, and Spider-Man does wear pretty tight clothes in general, so, you know, it doesn't look terrible, but also it only comes down to, like, mid-calves tops. I mean, it was pretty big when he first had it, so, you know, it, it's, it wasn't terrible, but, yeah, he comes back down wearing this costume, and I'm just like, do I want to go to the movie with him wearing this flood pants Spider-Man costume? totally riding his butt and uh and I'm, I'm like that's too small for you do you have anything else and he was like nah i gotta, I gotta wear it and he was all upset about it he wanted to wear it but i told him to go back up and look for something else he goes back up eventually it's time to go and i'm like okay bud do you, are you ready to go are you dressed and he's like yeah i found something that i can wear 
And he comes down. He's got a costume for pretty much everything over the years. He likes costumes. So he's had a Captain America costume and he's had an Iron Man costume. And he's. I even made a, a Thor hammer for him just using a box and a pipe and some duct tape. So he's had a little something of everything. He's got an Iron Man glove that has like a, a battery pack in it. And it has, you know, the, the repulsor beam thing can light up in the palm. The batteries are dead for it, but he's like, I'm, I'm going to wear this. So he brings that with him. Thank goodness the batteries are dead. Yeah, because <laughs> it makes noises as well as lights up. But uh, yeah, he brings that with him. He was wearing it, but I don't think he was really feeling it because we got there and we sat down. He takes the glove off and he puts it in the cup holder. <laughs> He did that immediately, and then he gets onto my lap, and he's sitting on my lap for an hour. Then he goes and sits on his sister's lap for an hour. He comes back and sits on my lap for an hour. And then we get to the point of the movie where Iron Man sacrifices himself, does the snap, and, you know, he's not Thanos, so he's not able to survive something like that. He's just a man. And everybody runs to his side, and you know they're 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 oh, Tony, are you are you are you going to be you know you're okay? You look at me, you're going to be okay. All that kind of stuff, and and he's he's basically, he's dying there. And my son turns around, and he reaches back and he picks up that Iron Man glove out of the uh, cup holder. At that oh. moment, takes it and puts it on his hand as he watches the rest of the movie. I mean, it was a sad. <laughs> It was a sad bit of the movie as it is, and I'm already easily manipulated emotionally by films. I cry a lot in movies, and I, I've, <laughs> I've said that a bunch of times, so it's easy to get me to cry at a movie. And so I was probably already crying at this point, but then when he stops, he reaches back, picks up the Iron Man glove, and puts it on as Iron Man's dying. I don't know why, but it it touched me so much, and I just cried twice as much. And I couldn't tell. Some, at one point, it felt like maybe he was crying too, but I don't think so. I don't know. You know, kids are funny that way. Emotional things don't necessarily make them cry. But on some level, and, he must have picked up on it, or he wouldn't have done that, you know? But yeah. I don't know, it just, it, it really moved me and made the scene all the more meaningful to me when I did that, because I could see that it touched him as much, and he, he thought, oh, Iron Man, oh, I've got my Iron Man glove right here, why am I not wearing it? I'm not supporting Iron Man in his time of need, or whatever, I don't know, but yeah, it made the experience all the more uh precious to me it's something that i'm going to remember i think forever i don't know uh you guys will have forgotten it by morning but uh it's funny because i came home from the movie and i wanted to tell my wife about this <laughs> she hasn't seen the movie i can't be like okay so iron man dies right and when that happens because I don't want to ruin it for her, so she's <laughs> got to go see it before I can tell her the story. Did he talk about it afterwards? No, he he really enjoyed it. It's funny, too, because, like, yeah, when the movie ended, he goes, Oh, Mommy's going to love to hear about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't do that. That's not okay. <laughs> but, yeah, when we got home and she said, How was the movie? And he said, Great! Oh. Which is not how he usually, uh, you know, you ask him something. Even if he liked it, how was it? He'd be like, eh, it was good. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he's seven. So generally, you're probably not going to remember a lot from from that time. But I wouldn't be surprised if he remembers, if this is one of those things that he remembers. Yeah, so. we've talked about this before, but I was seven when I saw Star Wars and I totally remember it. So I could see it having an impact on Yeah, I mean, sure. it, it just depends. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder what it would be like being a kid growing up through the uh, through the Marvel time period if that wh- how it compares to what you know growing up with et and indiana jones and star wars and uh, back to the future and ghostbusters and stuff does yeah. it does it compare but yeah it really gave this movie an extra added oomph 
it'll always mean a lot more to me, I think, just because of that experience. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And Very cool. I, I, I like Iron Man a lot. I wouldn't say he's my favorite, but that was really cool. Uh, Captain America had his end in this as well. You know, he's the one that sent back to put... And you think the movie's over at this point, too. You know, nothing else is going to be coming at you at that point. He's just going to go and put stuff back and then come right back or not come back at all. I don't know. Um, And the the time travel rules kind of confuse me at this point. Uh, (laughs) I do feel kind of bad because I saw a show where they reminded you of the fact that Peggy Carter got married to somebody else. Yes, she did. In in Winter Soldier. <laughs> so that guy got the shaft in the end. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things with all these people coming back five years later. I mean, it it's like the end of Castaway where he comes back, but she's married to someone else. And, you know, people have sort of moved on. So all of that could be. Yeah. How will that be? Like Spider-Man and Ned... Is that what his name is? Is Ned, right? Yeah. Right. His friend, the you know, they see each other at school again, but who's all at school? But when is this? Why would you go back to school? And yeah, the teachers have all <laughs> changed. Half the students are now graduating from college. Yeah, they graduated. I wonder what that is like because they, yeah, I mean, it's five years later and then they brought all these people back and they're back to the age that they were before... They left, but then all the rest of the people are five years older. Well, and the world is still kind of like, trashed, you know, all those issues that it had. Yeah, that's not resolved. Imagine like you had a girlfriend, right? You don't anymore. <laughs> and then, she, I don't know, like you got snapped away or she got snapped away. And then you come back, you were both 13 and now she's 18 or something. <laughs> That's over, you know? It's just like, that stuff's still out there. The story could really go into a whole new direction. (laughs) Well, if only there was a TV show that had its sixth season and another seventh (laughs) season where they could deal with this sort of thing. Too bad. But they won't. Yeah, I know they won't. That's the one thing that I really don't expect them to deal with at all through this. It's going to be like, everything is back to normal. Maybe they will. I, I was watching this YouTube video, this series that this guy was doing where he was talking about the trouble with the Marvel movies. And it's just that each movie is like the big comic book event. You know, like you had Civil War, which was a big event in comics. And then when Civil War ended, you had a year or more of all the various comic books dealing with the fallout of what happened in that. So, you know, you change the world and then you had these smaller things that could show you what the world was like now that it was changed. And with the movies, you don't get that because the movies is all there is. And sadly, the TV shows, and there's now a large amount of them out there, but they don't really deal with it you know like the agents of shield was the only one that even attempted to deal with it mostly only after captain america winter soldier i guess because they destroyed shield basically (laughs) and so this show being called the agents of shield has to deal with that but otherwise it's all just been really really superficial stuff and it never feels like they're dealing with what has happened in the movies Mm -hmm. Maybe that's going to change now that we have, I don't know, Disney Plus coming our way with a whole bunch of shows planned for that. But it feels to me like all the shows that they've got planned are prequels that may not deal with any of this stuff anyways. I don't know. Uh, I can't. Well, I I can complain about it because they haven't done their job yet. You know, they should have. They should have really interwoven the shows in the in the movies but they didn't so they let us down in that respect but maybe they'll pick up the ball and run with it from here and do better i don't know we'll see well that's that's talk for another episode there will be tons more of these movies usually i talk about the uh, box office and we talk about the score let me just very briefly say it's the biggest opening of all time. By a large The previous margin. biggest opening was Infinity War, and it did 
267 million or something like that. And Endgame did 357 million. That's amazing. It's already made a billion dollars worldwide. Wow. No movie has ever done that. It's broken every single imaginable record. And it almost feels like this is one of those records that will stand for a while. Yeah, so, it, they had to make 22 movies and build all up to, to accomplish this. So I, when's the next time there's going to be a franchise that has that many movies? In? Well, and you think of all the star power and all the different people that were sort of drawn in to all of these movies every cameo and they came together for these last two it's awesome i i just feel like i said this before but i just feel it was so cool to be a part of this kind of cultural phenomenon yeah it was really an event it's one of those things you know i remember people talking about how big a deal titanic was when it came out because it was this movie that just kept on going and everybody just kept seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. And I don't know that it is or isn't. I, you know, the, the whole adjusted for inflation thing, I don't know where it sits as far as that goes, but this feels like it will be bigger of an event than Titanic ever was. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I think so. (laughs) I just think, I mean, Titanic kind of was one of those that sort of built the yeah. kind of buzz. And, you know, people watched it many times and all of that. But this, like, to be so huge right from the get-go, I think that's unique. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to die off either. I think it's going to hold. There's going to be a lot of repeat viewings. I mean, I want to see it again. <laughs> Another thing that's so neat about this is that it was like this everywhere. In China, it did over 300 million. Wow. It broke every single record in every other country where it played, even though I still tend to feel like these are, you know, American characters, New York-centric characters and all that. It doesn't matter. They resonate with people, whether you're Russian or Chinese Mm -hmm. or British or, you know, you have to read the subtitles. And so that's also really, really cool. A cultural phenomenon that goes beyond borders and languages. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's done a billion dollars already in its opening weekend. What, 1.2 billion, you know, in the the whole world. And no movie has ever done that. So it's not just us, (laughs) but there were audiences cheering and crying everywhere. It's something amazing. And... Again, like I said, it feels like the end. I know that my heart will go on. Wait, that's the other movie. (laughs) I know that uh, the stories, you know, the movies are going to go on. I just, I can't imagine them managing to create what they've done here again. Well, I hope that they don't ever try. Will there be more Avengers movies? I mean, we've got, I guess... Sam as uh, the new captain. Valkyrie is the new Thor. I don't know. It's not like Thor's gone away. Well, Thor she's leading Asgard. Is, yeah, Thor is is still around. So he, I mean, I don't know, he's he's part of the Asgardians of the galaxy now. <laughs> so you've got, I don't know what we'll have, if there will be some Iron Man replacement or not. We've got Spider-Man, you know, what? We know that there'll be a Black Panther too. We know that there'll be, I assume there will be a Doctor Strange too. Well, and that was one, not the Doctor Strange, but the Black Panther. That was one thing that my daughter and I were talking about is like, well, what happened in those five years in Wakanda, you know? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden he comes back and I'm guessing someone else was leading, you know, in those five years. And Umbaku, is that what his name is? Umbaku is like, dude, no, (laughs) I've been the king for five years, man. You're out, okay? See, that's an interesting idea for that movie. This thing is over. I ain't fighting you on the waterfall again. They show (laughs) Wakanda at the very end. Wakanda looked like it was in really good shape, whereas the rest of the world had just gone to hell. And maybe that's fair. Maybe that's just how Wakanda always is because the people are better and the technology is better and stuff like that. Um, th- yeah, we'll definitely yeah. see a second one of those. And hopefully they will talk mm-hmm. about what happened during those five years. And right. what if there wasn't a king in Wakanda right. and they did just fine 
and they're just like, hey, uh, we don't need a king. We're good. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sort of. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we, you can just you can just <laughs> be Black Panther from here on out. You don't need to, to fight crime and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll have. Uh, uh, it seems like what Marvel does is trilogies. You know, they do did a trilogy for Captain America. They did one for Iron Man. They did one for Thor. And once they make their their three movies, then they just become Marvel Cinematic Universe characters, and they just appear here and there and everywhere. So like Iron Man would appear in Civil War, and he appeared in Spider Man, and. Th- Thor, I am assuming, is now going to be in the Guardians of the Galaxy and so forth. You know, you have that kind of thing. So, you know, we've got Guardians. They've got one more to go. Several others, like Spider-Man. He's, his second movie is about to come out, so he's got at least one more to go. Black Panther has only got one. Uh, Ant-Man, he's still got one more to go. Doctor Strange hasn't even had his second movie yet. I've heard tell that they're going to bring in what are they called the eternals is that what it is yeah they, they that's one of those that's so obscure it's just like who who's in the eternals that means nothing to me Ooh. yes <laughs> the eternals you know famous jack kirby characters who okay duh <laughs> what a bunch of a hoes yeah they're gonna bring back <laughs> that guy yeah there will be a lot more movies uh, you don't turn off the money faucet like this, but uh, but yes, I, w- I am sad for the people that won't be back. And I was really afraid they were going to kill off Thor when there's so much more potential story with him. But it sure fe- felt like they're setting up him in Guardians 3. So yeah, we don't have to wait long for that. Yeah, that'll be cool. It just feels like the the end of an era, and I don't know that I have as much confidence in the next era as I do in this one for some reason. I worry that it's not going to continue as great as it will be, as it was, I should say. What feels like the return of the Jedi to me, it's, I just hope we don't have a prequel trilogy in our future. Yeah, we'll see. I mean... I, you know, new Toy Story movie coming out. And I feel like that's... Yeah. Really? <laughs> you know, like, didn't that end in a great way? Like, can't we just have it be over? But sometimes these things surprise us and are great, and we're happy that they did it. So we'll hope that that's the case here. Yeah, I'll hope for the best and continue pessimistically fearing for the worst. But, you know, the good thing is, you know, when you're as old as I am... <laughs> the next 10 years of movies will pass in an eye blink and I'll be able to tell you just exactly how they were. So there's that. Uh, feels like we're coming to a close. Is there uh, is there anything more that you guys wanted to talk about before we finish up? No, I, I wanted to thank Renee for, for joining us with this. I did want to talk to you about like all the women characters being on screen at the same time and whether that was for your daughter right. or what that was all about but maybe maybe i don't need to i mean big has already put a cap on this and it feels like we ended everything on such a positive happy note <laughs> <laughs> well i'm happy to share thoughts on that at a future date but i'm very like happy to be able to participate in this because it really uh, made an impact on me to watch this movie and to think about you guys and knowing how important all of this has been to you over the years and sort of to share thoughts with you has been fantastic. So thank you for including You are welcome. Thank you for coming and lending our show a little bit of class. (laughs) That's awesome. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say, hey, thanks for classing up our show. And Big did it for me. Do you see? We are brothers. We're brothers. Hey, brother. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to let everybody go. Uh, thanks for listening to the show. It's It's been a little long. Hopefully you weren't bored. <laughs> Hopefully you uh, made it through and, and enjoyed the whole thing. And uh, yeah, we'll be back again with more That Gets My Goats about awesome stuff like this. Shouldn't be long before uh, Spider-Man Far From Home is out. Yeah, according to my calendar, 
30 seconds from now that comes out. Oh, geez. I was going to say tomorrow, <laughs> but it's even closer than that. Okay. So, yeah, we'll be back with more. And there's probably other movies in the interim that we'll talk about as well. So, thanks for listening, everybody. I hope you had a good time. I am Big Anklevich, <laughs> signing out. I always wish Outfield, also signing out. And I'm Renee. Thank you all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah, I remember that Gitch My Goat. That show was produced under what was known at the time as a Creative Commons attribution, no derivatives 3.0 license. All sounds like gibberish to a young fella like you, don't it? Basically, that was a way of saying that you could download the show. Listen to it, share it with others all you wanted, so long as you didn't charge for it or try to pass it off as your own. Not that anyone would want to, you understand. Oh, big and rich. They sure did try their best to make a good show. Didn't save them, though. Not in the end. Never saw such a grisly sight my whole long life. What with all the entrails and... You paying attention to me, boy? Uh, no attention span your generation. Not like we had back in 2019. Now I'm at the two hour, 15 minute mark on my recording, so I'm good, I think. Say what? Oh, it wasn't recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we were supposed to have pressed record? Because no. I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. 